Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We ask the blessing on the reading of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to repeat a little bit. We're in Matthew 5. Uh, Jesus took his disciples. He saw the multitude. And then in verse 1, it says, His disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Now let's remember, Matthew is, uh, it's really written to the Jew, but it presents Christ as king. We're seeing him presented as king. He's one day going to come back and rule and reign for a thousand years. He offered the millennial kingdom when he first came, uh, but they rejected him. We'll talk more about that as we go through the book of Matthew. But also to the religious man, Matthew, it should show the religious man that we aren't living the Sermon on the Mount today. We aren't good enough to go to heaven uh, by keeping our his laws. And if you think you're good enough to go to heaven because you've never done things as bad as somebody else, I have news for you. The Bible teaches otherwise. You're not good enough on your own merits to go to heaven. But in here, it says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Have the meek inherited the earth? Uh, is that who is in control right now? Or do militaries and powers that be dominate certain areas of the world? Uh, we aren't living it now. That should be something that should be proof positive when you look at Matthew 5, 5, that it really is talking about future events and things that are going to happen. And in Christ's millennial reign, people will live uh, by the Sermon on the Mount, and he'll have an enforced righteousness, and people will be forced in essence, worldwide, to live the way God wants them to live. And then we'll see at the end of that, it says many people will rebel after that. Satan will be cast in a pit for a thousand years. No one will be able to blame him. Well, the devil made me do it, so to speak. And then after that, he'll come out and people will follow him in droves and many will uh, end up choosing hell rather than heaven at the end of that millennial reign. Um, but continuing on, it says... it. In all these, it says, but blessed are. That's a possessive. Uh, if you're a Christian, you really possess uh, these things. We should be poor in spirit. But why, what I want today's lesson to be on is, why are we poor in spirit? James 4, 6 says, but he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but he giveth grace unto the humble. Uh, we should have humbled ourselves before God. We should have a poor spirit because he showed us we need a savior. Uh, Psalm 147.3 says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Why are you poor in spirit? Why should the Christian at times still be poor in spirit? Is, uh, is it because you had a hard life? Is it because of circumstance? Be careful that you haven't come to Christ for a better life. Uh, one term that gets used a lot, a lot of people talk about being broken. Well, why are we broken? Are we broken in heart? Because again, we just we have tough circumstances in life. We should be broken because of sin. It's not circumstance, not because you had a hard life. Now, abuse is an awful thing, and if and there are people out there who have been abused in different ways by other people. And if that is happening or has happened to anyone listening, that is terrible. But you won't be saved because you had a tough life. And because you have it tough, if that's the reason you come to Christ, you have to be saved because you're coming because you know you're a sinner. The reason we come to Christ is because we are sinners in need of a Savior. Start going through the Ten Commandments. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen something? Did you ever take a quarter out of your mom's purse? A lie makes you a liar. Stealing something makes you a thief. Have you ever used God's name in vain and used God's name like a curse word? You use Jesus' name. I've heard people say the name Jesus Christ as a curse word in your life. If you've ever done that, you've taken the name of God in vain as if it's worthless. And then you're a lying thief and a blasphemer at heart and you'll be judged. First Timothy 1.15 says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. It doesn't mean, you know, in all this stuff, there is an application in the Sermon on the Mount. But Psalm 34, 18 kind of sums it up. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as of our contrite spirit. They're humble because they've sinned. They're humble because they're broken over their sin, not their circumstance.